Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be looking at the AI research tool Consensus. I last did a video on Consensus more than a year ago and there's been a lot of updates since then. So in this video I'm going to look at some of the things that have been updated and I'm going to demo some of the premium features. They've provided me with a discount code, it's down in the video description if you want to get premium yourself. So let's start off by looking at some of the recently released new features. Conveniently they have a feature updates page and most recent one is the ability to export into all of the major citation software. So we can save a CSV or an RIS. That's definitely really handy, something that a couple of the other AI research apps do as well. So nice that they've added this feature. Search history, definitely a handy one as well. If you've been doing a few different searches on similar topic, being able to come back to what you've already searched. And Teams. So a lot of these products are starting to move more towards models where it's not just aimed at a single consumer, but actually an institution or a team. So this is quite nice if you are running a research team or you're trying to get your institution to sign up for consensus where it is just a single subscription for the team rather than having to deal with a whole lot of individual ones. Dating back March, they added a whole lot of language support. February, they added access to the PDFs of Open Access. In January, they launched their Copilot. And so we're not going to scroll all the way back through all the updates, but here's one last one. Consensus GPT, as with many of the good AI products that are out there, they have built their own GPT and so you can access that through the GPT marketplace. So we've logged in, here we are on the main page and we can see that just as with many of the other tools and as with consensus when we looked at it last time, just got this box in the middle where we can ask a research question. New additions, so synthesize insights, we can get a summary from number of papers and Copilot. So Copilot definitely really handy for being able to generate content and ask questions about what's happening. So we will use both of these. Just on the main page they do give us some guidance of how to go about searching. Most of these are pretty standard research questions but you can also ask things that are a little bit more binary, ask for particular effects and then they give a few examples as well. So let's have a go. So first question I asked how is AI used in medical education? We don't get the consensus meter because it wasn't a yes no question. We do get the summary, we have a couple of notes there. So this is uh, beta as is the copilot and we can see the copilot's given us an uh, introduction. Pretty good set of bullet points, each one being referenced to particular articles and then we can come down and we can see the different articles. Really like that we have the author, journal name, citations, date and then icons that are telling us when something is highly cited, when it's a rigorous journal and systematic review and then it also gives us a study snapshot. So a number of studies in the systematic review 34. So really handy for being able to hunt through information about these papers. If I see papers I like I can click save, I can share and if we click on site we get the different main different citation styles uh, and also the BibTeX as well if you are writing in LaTeX. Really handy to be able to get that and it also means if I'm writing a short article and I'm not really using referencing software I would normally use Google Scholar to just pump out these in the right style but having them just there straight away pretty handy. They have a fairly comprehensive filter as well so open access only, number of citations, different methods so methods is definitely one that could be pretty useful for some areas. Controlled studies, human studies, sample size above a certain point, journal ranking and domains. So it's some really nice filters there. So we can see here, put in something maybe a little bit controversial, does AI improve education outcomes? It's a yes no question. So the consensus meter has kicked in. They looked at 18 papers and they had 78% yes, 22% possibly. Interesting there was 0% no's. I still like the consensus meter. It's probably not something rigorous enough that I'd be using it in formal research, but just trying to get a snapshot on a yes no question, pretty nice. With the copilot, we haven't actually been using it other than having the button ticked. So having the button ticked 
is going to generate something and just by default with no instruction we can see that it is just giving the key insights but maybe we'll have an experiment where you can see that it says that it can get answers generate lists write papers so let's see if we can get it to do a little bit more Okay, so here's how we go about using the Copilot. But basically the box where traditionally you would just enter your research question, you can give it other instruction as well. And this is where the Copilot will act. So here I asked to draft a study designed to explore if AI improves educational outcomes. And we can see it's given me an introduction, some research questions, methodology. Really pretty good comprehensive. That's something once upon a time someone in a research methods course might have set as a short assignment and... There it's all done just in the click of a button and with referencing as well so definitely definitely pretty good and we can even kind of take it and have a little bit of fun at it with it so we can even adapt the uh the, the style in the audience so really going to an extreme write an AI summary of whether ai improves education outcomes six-year-old will understand and we can see all of a sudden conversational tone simple language making an analogy to robots. I'm not sure they really needed 10 references for these two sentences, but you can see how that really turned it into something based on what we've asked there. Turned it around to the other extreme, something that a grandma will understand. And we can see a little bit more length, a little bit more complexity to the writing, but still keeping the actual content fairly simple so that the grandma can understand. Pitching it, written at a university professor level, and we can see the increased complexity of the vocab and also the content as well. Just exploring some of the things the Copilot can do. So they have a nice summary page on their blog. And so we can see drafting outlines of literature reviews, bullet pointed lists, list an order of commonality for the symptoms of an illness. And then here's the uh, making something simple for uh, someone of a certain age. And that's pretty handy. Maybe you do need something for your 10-year-old or your grandma to be able to understand. Flexible of formatting, so grouping pros and cons together. Again, something with most likely. Write an introduction. Write a poem. Make a rap like Snoop Dogg. Uh, sure, why not? Okay, well, it did. In fact, actually, it, I thought it had finished and then it started to add a little bit more. I don't know if it's borderline racist or not, but it certainly did what it was asked. It has made a rap song in the style of Snoop Dogg. Not my area, so I'm not sure whether all the facts are correct, but seems to have done it. So addition of Copilot, definitely a really handy feature. And certainly for those more serious uses, not just writing raps. So I couldn't help myself. Thought I would ask it if it would write a parody song for me. So here is the assumptions of linear regression to the tune of Hit Me Baby One More Time. Apparently kind of looks roughly there it's one of those things I've I've tried this a couple of times before and then when I've tried to play it or sing it sometimes you find that it didn't quite manage it if I get enough likes and subscribes from this video maybe a little bit of peer pressure might get me to actually perform one of these I've done a few others notice that chat GPT has got really reluctant to try and write a song to the tune of something else or write a parody song coming back to our main page We've got the synthesizer, we've got the co-pilot, we can throw research questions and instructions in there now. Still a nice simple interface, still seems pretty effective. The premium version makes use of GPT-4 and gives you unlimited searches, unlimited use of everything. So the step up from free to the premium I think is pretty good. And if you do find that this is a tool that's handy, I would say well worth it. So this has been Consensus. The discount code down in the video description will help you get premium a little bit cheaper and also help support the channel. Thanks very much for watching. I'll be back really soon with more videos on AI, stats, research and random stuff.